I tell you, I speak uh, very good Swedish. <laughs> and I have, uh, in fact, to tell you the truth, I have no problem with English either, as long as I speak myself. I do understand everything I say. <laughs> the, the, the problem starts when you put questions to me. I mean, <laughs> OK. Uh, I will speak first on my company, and then I will speak about values. When start is, uh, speaking about my company, I, you have to understand the, uh, the, we are a small company. Because when I start speaking about it, it looks rather big, but it is a quite a small company. Also, our sales in a year is less than General Motors' uh, turnover in a fraction of a second. We are 110 people, but uh, comparing with General Motors, of course, we make much more profit because they make, made a loss of millions. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I have a background. I'm, I'm educated in business economics, and um, I've studied uh, art and some culture things, and um, I worked as a, as a at a pharmaceutical company, and then I got, uh, was a manager for a company owned by the Swedish, uh, or as the state of Sweden. Uh, that company had a daughter company, and I get very frustrated working with this state-owned company. So uh, I bought out one of the daughter companies which I used to work with. Uh, that was a small company. We, we were forging uh, bars, wrecking bars, and we still are. Uh, in the 85, uh, I bought uh, the Grand Forsberg's X factory, and, the, and that company was bankruptcy. Uh, we had uh, were no toilets, no electricity left. I mean, everything was absolutely down. It was a old, nice surrounding. The buildings looked like shit, and, uh, but it has a good, uh, long history. And I was interested in history, uh, because history is one of my favorite things. So, uh, then, uh, so the company was formed in 1902. So I was coming there, and still it was uh, seven people working there. All of them are still working there. Uh, so we, we started uh, to... What, uh, to think, what shall we do? Okay, we should make access. Uh, but it's not so easy to take over a company who is absolutely bankruptcy. But uh, we had no sales. Uh, the last the year they, they went bankruptcy, they, had a, they sold less than 500 access. So, uh, and this is in, in regarding to my believing. If you start with something new, you have to learn something about it. So, and you have to form a group. So, uh, we try to involve a lot of different people to help us to do the very best acts in the world. And that sounds very stupid, and I tell you, we tried hard and we didn't succeed. We make them, we, we try to make them the painting nicer, everything better and nicer. But I mean, then, so it didn't function. I was sitting uh, on a train reading a book from, it, this was in 1987 or something like that. Uh, I was reading a book by a, an American guy, Paul Hawken. And he was uh, writing about the next economy. And he wrote about uh, how, uh, nature and the resources and this type of thing. But this was 86. And he was speaking about mass uh, as, and information. And his book said that most products have too much mass and too little information. And the next generation of product has to have more information and less mass. So if you take away something, Take away things, and you will have a better product, and put in more information in it. And that sounds very familiar with me when I read it, but he made it very, uh, at a very basic level. I mean, I could understand, because he was speaking about products. He was speaking about cars, for example. I mean, he was very uh, fond of Japanese cars, smaller, more practical, and had much more knowledge built into the course, for example. Um, and when I came home to Grandsforce, 
it was fa familiar because this is, in fact, the base of Tao. I mean, the l less is more. Don't do too much. Take it easy. Don't overeat. I mean, all these things are from it's a two thousand three two three thousand year old history. It's Tao. So, and I was very inspired of this. But I say, okay, more information and so on. And he was thinking about the, the new computer age coming up and these type of things. So, and here is a spindle. I like these spindles. Okay. Um, when I came to the factory, uh, I had a meeting with uh, a friend of mine. He's a blacksmith, and he he is he or was a, a teacher at um, Stockholm School of Art for teaching forging. And he was there looking, and he said, Gabriel, so these axes look much better before you paint them. Why do you paint them? Take away the paint. And then, oh yes, that was exactly what Paul Hawken was uh, writing in his book, take away. So I said, yeah, why not? So we, we started to say, can we take away something else? And um, you see, our axes, they looked very nice before we took away everything, because they were, uh, we, in these days, we had, and I have to uh, s tell you, uh, so in these days, we had two groups of people working in the factory. We had the blacksmiths <coughs> and we had the grinder. And the blacks everybody were paid by pieces. So, and so the, the blacksmiths, they earned a lot because they came, even if they came late and went early, they worked hard and as sh a uh, very uh, as if they didn't really care. As if the, the faster and ba better, you know, no, worse, <laughs> the faster and worse they forged, the more the next group, the underclass, the grinder, had to grind. And it is obvious, because if you, if you do a shit job when forging, you have to grind it away. So, <laughs> yes, it is like that. So, uh, ahead, we have to stone grind it with a big stone. We have to grind it with a finer stone. We have to belt, uh, polish it in, with a sand band. And then we have to uh, polish it once more. So we, three times, one, two, three, four, five sides. And then we have to poly uh, grind the, the bite as well. So it was a big uh, uh, job, really, grinding. And so we took away as well, uh, the, the paying by pieces. So everybody get uh, paid by month. And they, have, they got more or less the same uh, monthly pay. And um, then uh, we, as in the group, were sitting, looking at old axes. And old axes, they were not painted. Because they were forged and used directly. And um, so we why, why don't you forge them all right from the beginning, so we can take away some grinding? And I tell you, the black man, oh, no, we can't, the machines are too old. Our machines are from 1920, 1930, okay? Uh, we can't, okay, but we say, okay, we stop everything. We had no customers anyway, we had to do something. <laughs> So they started to rebuild not, and to service up the old machinery. And they started to try to forge a much better axe head. And in the same time parallel, we tried to, to learn as much as possible about axes. We bought books, we looked in old arch archive, arch archive or something like that. And we, uh, we, we collected axes. And we even built up an axe museum. We have, now we have about 2,000 old axes in this axe museum. And we spoke with old people who has used to work there. And, and they, we tried to learn everything. And I tell you, you can take, and this is my believing, you can take any product, any service, anything, and just adapt it. And then, if you learn everything in this area, you are the king. I mean, it's, it's like that, absolutely. Because the one who knows the most is 
and it will always be, in my opinion, the winner. So it is based on knowledge. But that is only one side of it. But you have to have knowledge. I see a lot of people, they do a lot of things without knowledge. And they are very successful. But how long? It's another thing. Uh, another side which is as important as knowledge is that you have values. Value, value is the right, right word? Value, okay. So if you don't, if you don't, ha if you don't have values and know the ideas, the, the, why you are there, why you are doing this, why? I mean, it's not me it's, it's meaningless to do something. You have to understand. That's what something has to be important, not only for me, but for the people working there, for the suppliers, for the customers. It has something. We have to have something which is important. Why should we do axes? Why don't feed cattle? Or why shouldn't we make shoes or something going to Africa, helping somebody there? So the background, and it. And, and I think this, is, this has, of course, something to do with knowledge as well. It is, I spoke with somebody else yesterday, where is she? But anyway, um, and it, it's important to have to read, to, be, to understand what's going on in the society. And I mean, if you don't have a 10,000 year perspective of a society, you are lost. But you have to read and understand what is going on, political, and social and environmental and this type of very important things. So, and that, that this background of knowledge, what you can read in books, helps you to help you to bring, create, form a value. So it is this too, you have to have a cultural background. And not only me, it's everybody working in the company. And w with this cultural background, you can build values which you believe in. So you know where you are standing and you know what you stand for. And then life is very easy, I tell you. Nothing can happen because you, the, the, the only the worst thing which can happen is that you get a, an accident or get killed, but you can't really stop that anyway. But so if you know the values where you stand and what you stand for, okay, and then on the other side you know everything in your, in your area. Uh, we, have a, we have decided to um, be environmental. And um, you see, the design of a, uh, uh, of a company, the product development of a company is much more important for us than developing a new product. Because a company is much more important in society than a single shit product. I tell you, it's really true. Because in a company, you have a lot of connections. You have uh, people working there. Uh, you have suppliers, you have a surrounding, you have customers, you have products, you have a background, and you have a responsibility to do something in your society. And you have a, a responsibility to bring something to the next generation. And, I mean, uh, I really believe that uh, creating and recreating and always creating a good company is the most important. But a good company has, of course, good products. Uh, we, uh, this was the product. So uh, we decided, have you seen it? It's blue and red. And here we have epoxy. It was so dangerous. So if we got it, we had to have special clothes and hand gloves. So if we got it on the skin, we had to go to the near hospital. And uh, it, uh, you see, when you grind, uh, you have to have grindstones and grind belts and you take a lot of air to throw out with the uh, materials and then you have to take in a lot of new air, otherwise it gets no air in there. <laughs> so um, 
uh, and that is extremely costly because in half, half a year you have to heat up the air you take in and put out. So, uh, and then when you grind, you have to paint it because otherwise it will start rusting. Uh, so then we bought, uh, uh, paint is expensive, but it's a lot of uh, chemicals in it and you have to have a lot of ventilations and it's a very bad job working with grinding and painting and epoxy. Okay, so our new product was um, this one. Uh, you see, this one is not grind, it's forged directly. And you see, even this is different because um, from the beginning the blacksmith said we can't do it any longer. You see, it makes out here. Can you see it? No? Yes? Okay. And it's not grinded here, 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 here or here. As it's only grinded at the, at the bite. And we took away more than 90% of the grinding. And we took away the paint, 100% of the paint, and all the stuff who goes with the paint. We took away the, the um, epoxy, and we put in a wooden wedge here instead. And we, and this is the most important in, really, we put in some information in it. And when I'm thinking about it, our team is including this guy, Paul Hawke, and I met him once, but he didn't like us, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but he is still in our team, because we speak a lot of him and we reread read his books. <laughs> so, I mean, you can have a virtual team, they don't need, even if they don't like to be in your team, they can <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, you see, this little booklet is extremely important, and why? You see, in Sweden, only in Sweden, uh, we had three, four hundred thousand forest workers. And then something happened. Something called chainsaw came. And in a, in a few years, uh, the number of people working in the forest was down to 20,000. And it was the same all over the world. And of course, uh, then, so in the US, it used to be more than more than 600 companies making axes. In Sweden we were about 20, but when I entered the market, uh, as in 85, we were, we were three of us. So, um, and that was a very dramatical shift. And, made, and that was, in fact, the reason why the product looked like this. Because, you see, when people get forced by competition, they think the only way is to lower the price. But I tell you, you can lower the price down to zero and you will not compete with a chainsaw. <coughs> but uh, they tried to lower the price and uh, then they made, a, uh, they made not a quality product any longer. Because of course it's cheaper to put uh, epoxy here. It's cheaper in a way to, to make it straight. But the balance of the axe is not as good. You can have a, a, a wood which is not hickory and you paint it and it looks nice. But it's, you, 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 you lower the quality. And, and now I'm back to knowledge. I mean, it's, interest, it's important to understand why these things happened. Why was the competition so hard? Of course, the forest worker is gone. Um, but in the retail business, the wholesalers and the hardware stores, they were continuing selling the same axis as they used to when it was three, four hundred thousand forest workers in Sweden. And the company, Axe Manufacturing, they made the same axis as they used to. So when I went out to hardware stores and to the wholesalers, they, um, uh, they, they sold, they didn't know anything about Axis really. So therefore, this Axe book taught the people at the wholesaler base and at the retailer base and at the consumer base, what type of Axe should I have for splitting wood or sculpturing or carving or building a log house? Because the, the hardware store, they know, they know very lot about kitchenware and uh, bottles and a lot of other things, but not, Axis was a forgotten 
uh, knowledge. We started to sell quite good and we had five customers, five wholesalers in Sweden. And uh, we increased, we sell 1,200 axes and the next year 4,800 and so on. And then something happened. Um, I was at a trade show in Germany and then it was a dramatic shift because our competitor who made um, this one, they came out with this one. And uh, they even have a little booklet. And I tell you, uh, they entered our wholesalers. And uh, in the beginning, we dropped a little bit. But then they bought us out from the wholesalers. So they paid the wholesalers not, uh, and the wholesaler, it was marketing support. So we dropped 80% uh, of our customers. So I had to fire, near, uh, so to lay off the workers. So we were 20 in this time, 11 has to go. <coughs> and uh, then, the really new thing started because then I had to sell my wonderful house in Bromma, Stockholm. And we started to think, okay, we have our values. We have our knowledge. We have no customers. So we decided to, what shall we do? Okay, if you know where you stand and what you stand for, just go on. But then you have to be brave and you have to really have a team helping you. So we were, uh, looking at old axes, we started to develop new products. We started to uh, use computers. We started to sell to dealers, di dealers direct. We had no, we, wholesale was absolutely forbidden. We started to export. And uh, then, uh, for example, we had this ax museum and I brought this all the way from Sweden. And I tell you, this is a very typical handle from an axe museum. And if you have a handle like this, you can understand the weak point of an axe. Okay. So then, then another came here and you see they have tried to do something like that here. So then, of course, the step was not far. We started to put a, a steel plate here before it was destroyed. So by help of looking back, to the destroyed old axis. We learned and we developed a new axe. And we, so this is just an example. And here is another one. It, this axe came in and it is rounded here. I couldn't understand why uh, as it rounded here. And somebody, perhaps it's for repairing steel plates in cars or something like that. But after a couple of years, I learned from an old hunter in, in the na near of Grandsworth. Oh, we use this when we uh, shoot a moose, an elk. Uh, so we cut in the fur and we pull, and uh, so when you take the skin off, you can't, when you, uh, when you, you can take the skin and you can do it with a knife, but then you can destroy the skin. You can do it with your fist, you hit like this, but we have big mooses up there, so they <laughs> do it like that, so they hit like this one. So when I understand that, when we do it, did I understand that? Of course, it was very easy, and we started to make the hunter sex. It was already rounded like this. And I tell you, it's funny to nowadays stay on a uh, fair in Germany with a lot of hunters. And the big German guys you know, come oh, and explain for the wife, uh, here is a Swedish hunting axe. You see, one important, the last thing here, that when we sell the axes, we all axes come. You have this little X book. And here we have a guarantee card. Because we give 20 year guarantee. Because the best way to protect nature is to make new products or products which last long. So this, if you make a nice quality product, it lasts longer. And if you give 20 year guarantee, it is a proof that it will last longer. And we stand behind that. But in this little, this, it's a little card, and people send back information to us. And that, this feedback from the customers, what they think about our product, has helped us to develop at least five other uh, new axes. And it gives us, they, they say, we like the axe, we don't like it, but they, they communicate with us, and that is important. Okay, that was what I had to say.